Happy Saturday, everyone, and welcome back to Urban's Enchanted Tiki Land. This week, we're going to give you a little tour uh, of part of our tiki bar. Uh, going to uh, show off what we got in the mail, like we did last time. And we're going to be continuing our drink history segment with one of the earliest, yet most debated, tiki drinks. The Singapore Sling. As you may have figured out by now, we have a home tiki bar. <laughs> uh, and we thought it might be fun uh, to show off a little part of our small but growing collection of tiki things. Uh, right down here, one of the very first things that Abby and I got together in our beginnings of our tiki obsession is this little coconut monkey man right here. Uh, this is the sort of traditional standard Hawaiian coconut monkey. Uh, actually, a lot of these you find in like uh, like Mexico and uh, um, you know in the Caribbean. But this one specifically says Hawaii on it. But uh, yeah, Abby picked up this guy at uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army or a thrift store or something. And uh, yeah, he's just awesome. So uh, that was our first piece that we got together. Now, this fine young gentleman right here is one of the more traditionally carved tikis that we have. Um, and uh, if you notice here, uh, he has a collection of tropical flowers. Now what these are, this little offering that we've made to him, uh, we have a pack of straws that have silk flowers on them. So anytime one of our guests come over and uh, they have a, a tropical tiki drink, we ask them to remove the straw, or rather remove the flower from the straw, and uh, we place it here as, a, uh, as an offering. Uh, <laughs> this is a reminder of all of the fun times that we've had with friends uh, here at Urban's Enchanted Tiki Land. All right, this guy right here is one of my favorite pieces of our collection. This is the Krakatoa Volcano Mug. It is a, uh, a fog cutter style mug that we got at Disney World. We got this at Trader Sam's Grog Grotto at the Polynesian. You can see right there, Trader Sam's first edition. Uh, we got that last year in 2016 when uh, we took our trip to Disney World. Uh, we have the video for that, just not edited. Uh, someday we will get it up and uh, actually have it as a vlog. We only got one thing in the mail this week, uh, and it's uh, something we've been debating for a couple of months. It's, uh, it's actually caused almost a fracture in our marriage. It really has. It really has, and it's uh, this tablecloth, which we will show close above, but it has sexy hula ladies on it. But, but this was a hotly debated item. We went back and forth for hours. It took us all this time to get this tablecloth. And now we're moving on to curtains. We may need a divorce lawyer. So today we're gonna to be making the Singapore sling and we're gonna be following the recipe as outlined in this book. This is Martin and Rebecca Kate Smuggler's Code. This book, and we'll talk about this a bit later, but this has become the de facto Bible for tiki culture and tiki drinks in the last few years. Um, so if you don't own a copy of this and you have a home tiki bar, I recommend it. This tells you everything you need to know. To Amazon! To Amazon! All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to crush up some ice. Uh, for that, we got this little hand crusher here. It, uh, it's crank operated. It actually, it has one of those crazy um, pencil sharpener things where you can attach it to the table and it won't move. Yeah, it doesn't really work on this bar top, unfortunately, uh, but uh, yeah. It's, it's there. It's there. All right, so grab some of your ice. Uh, now you should have about, uh, it's at eight, eight to 12 ounces of crushed ice per serving. So while Matt does the ice over there on the work table surface, I'm gonna talk loud, because I'm crushing on teeth. I'm sorry my ice crushing is too loud for you, dear. This is a, uh, a pineapple juice based drink, and one thing that we found is that taking a spear of fresh pineapple and just blending it, and this is like one of those single serve smoothie kind of blenders, 
uh, works a lot better and is a lot tastier than just like the pineapple juice you get at the grocery store. Yeah. It's like less sweet. It's 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 just a whole lot better. Actually, fresh fruit in tiki drinks. Absolutely. It is a is a must, and it's it's actually cheaper in the long run. Yeah. Uh, one orange is like eighty cents. Yeah. You know, versus having to buy the whole bottle of orange juice and... And your guests will absolutely uh, notice and appreciate the difference. Mm -hmm. and so I got my crushed ice here and we're gonna take our cocktail shaker. Fresh limes are three for a dollar. You yeah. have no excuse. You really have no excuse. <laughs> now along with the crushed ice, I'm gonna throw in four cubes of ice. Uh, these are called agitator cubes. And uh, basically, as the crushed ice melts in, in with the drink, the agitator cubes kind of help things move and uh, makes it less clumpy and you get a much more even mix on your cocktail. So the Singapore Sling is the most contested drink in tiki culture. Is it a tiki drink? Is it not a tiki drink? Is it just an exotic cocktail? It's a lot of debate. A lot of differing opinions on this. So the Singapore Sling was invented in 1915 uh, at a Singapore hotel called the Raffles uh, by a bartender. Oh, oh the Raffles. That's hmm. my the Ruddles cover band name. Right. All right. <laughs> uh, it was uh, created by a bartender there named Myung Tong Boon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, it, it went by different names. It was uh, called the Raffles Sling or the Pink Gin Sling. Uh, but uh, it, it mostly was known as the Singapore Sling. Um, and its primary ingredient uh, is not rum, but gin. Uh, so for our purposes today, we're going to be using New Amsterdam gin. Now, New Amsterdam is a, it's a, it's a bit different. Uh, we like it. It's a, a bit less uh, pine solly than other gins. Yeah, a bit. All right. So, Singapore Sling. So for two drinks. Two drinks. I got the recipe back here. I'm gonna just double check this here so I have the right amount. Once you do the book here so you don't yeah. keep turning your back to the there camera. There we go. So now for each one of these, we're gonna be doing an ounce and a half of gin. Okay? Uh, ounce and a half is it's about that. Let's call that an ounce and a half, why not? Alright, so there's an ounce and a half. There's an ounce and a half. Okay, there's our gin. All right, now the next ingredient uh, that appears in some versions of this recipe, uh, technically not the Smuggler's Co. version, but uh, well, we're gonna do our own, is uh, the Orange Curacao. Uh, you can also use Cointreau or uh, Triple Sec, something like that. Uh, we're gonna use this. And from what I saw on one of the other ones, it wants only about a half an ounce per. So I'm gonna fill this up. Go. And there's our curacao. Ah, I really like the samurai films that curacao made. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. That was a horrible joke. I'm very sorry. All right. Um, the next thing that we want to have in here is uh, what is called Benedictine. Uh, now we can't get that here, uh, but it's a floral liqueur, and uh, there's plenty of uh, various substitutes. For example. Elderflower. Uh, normally you'd see Saint Germain. This one's just called Saint Elder. Uh, and it's it's a decent elderflower liqueur. It's used in a lot of these sort of floral but drinks. It's, it's very sweet and very syrupy. Yeah. So we are actually using Old Smoky Moonshine Honeysuckle. Yeah. Which gives it that good floral. Uh, you could also, if you don't want to add more alcohol to this already very alcoholic drink, you could use um, IKEA's Elderflower Syrup. Yeah. As a substitute. Yeah. So we went about oh yeah, a half ounce each, quarter and a half. Throw that in there. All right. Now probably the most uh, well one of the most important ingredients is the pineapple juice right here, and this is saying to do. Okay, so the Smuggler's Cove recipe doesn't actually include pineapple juice. But every other recipe. Every does. other recipe does. So we're gonna do the pineapple juice. Uh, I don't know. Let's say not that much pineapple juice. Maybe a little. More. A little more. There we go. There's our pineapple. I made that pineapple juice. Oh, uh, we will be using all the rest of that at some point. From have, power tools. Have no fear. You did. <laughs> and no sweat. Yes. 
All right, uh, the next thing, in order to sweeten her up a little bit, we're gonna throw in some Demerara syrup. Now, Abby's made this herself using Demerara sugar. And, and uh, evaporated cane sugar. Mm -hmm, and yeah. just water and just like yeah. let it go on the stove and then you've got Demerara syrup. Yeah, it's got a bit of a darker brown uh, flavor. This is used in a lot of tiki drinks. So just squeeze a little of that in there. Or a lot of that. Or a lot, <laughs> however much, doesn't really matter. All right. Now, uh, the next thing is bitters. Now, almost all of these classic cocktails include bitters. Um, we found actually that you can get these well, at almost any grocery store for like, geez, eight to $11. Walmart has them for like four bucks. I don't know what it is, so. So just regular Angostura bitters. All right, so we're gonna do is one dash each, so one, two, there we go. And don't we need Oh, we need orange. Uh, we need orange bitters too, actually. Sorry. You also get orange bitters. Again, got these at Walmart of all places. Weirdly enough, two dashes. Two. Brandy. We need brandy. Now you can also do cherry liqueur, uh, but I think for our purposes, uh, it's over on the left. Yeah. Okay. So for our purposes, we're gonna do uh, brandy, and then we're gonna throw in a little bit of uh, the grenadine. Uh, some recipes call for grenadine anyway, yeah, even with the cherry liqueur. Um, cherry brandy. Or, or cherry liqueur. Cherry I've, liqueur even, I've even seen cherry now, liqueur. We can't get anything but the um, very cheap arrow, you know, yeah. like all artificial it's cherry. Not that's not good. So yeah. this actually uh, turns out really tasty. Yeah, it's not bad. So right, we're going to do a half an ounce of brandy each. So that's one ounce. And, and we're going to do a little bit of the grenadine. Not too much. Grenadine. A little grenadine goes a long way. And we already have the Demerara in there. That's probably that might be too much. Okay. Finally, last things last, we need lemon juice. And like we said, with pine juice uh, pine pine juice, pine yes. Juice. Pine salt, no, that's gin. <laughs> uh, no, just like we said with pineapple juice, we're gonna use real lemons. And it calls for three quarters of an ounce. I'm gonna squeeze one whole lemon in there. That's gonna be about three quarters of an ounce, I'd say. Now we uh, we learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. We finally uh, we got a juicer. Again, like seven bucks on Amazon, yeah. and uh, it has saved us so many sticky hands. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so much effort. Yeah. So you place your half of a lemon or lime or small orange, whatever, in there, and. Now, it does not run down the back here like some people thought that it did uh, at a party that we were at, and I had to explain, had to teach the guy how to use it. There you go, you just squeeze in there, and you get that nice pulpy juice. There we go. Ew, pulpy juice, that sounds... It does sound a little, well, for alcohol. I normally don't, I normally don't like pulp in my orange juice, but when it comes to my alcoholic drinks, the pulp's okay. Yeah, spin it. I found that basically if you squeeze it once, then you spin it around the other way, Oh, that's a lot of lemons. That's, that's shit. No, that's enough. We're not gonna get scurvy this week either. No, <laughs> that is that. That's the beauty of tiki drinks. <laughs> oh, with some kind of citrus in there. All right. So now, when you're done, you have these nice sort of upside down little lemon boats. You take your inverted lemons and you pop them back out. And now you have these nice little lemon boat cat things. You can sit them on top of a drink for a garnish, or cut them in half, and squeeze it on there. Whatever you want to do. All right, well, that's all of our ingredients. So now. To the mixing. Now to the mixing. Shaker. Now you don't want to shake too much. Uh, you need it to be enough so that the ingredients all come together. And we have that crushed ice in there. So we want to have that a little bit frothy. The crushed ice actually will give your drink a bit of a frothy texture. But you don't want to do it too much because then it gets watery. So I'm going to say that's a, probably about enough shaking. Now for the Singapore Sling, what you want to do here is that you put a little bit of seltzer water in the bottom of your cup. And uh, now we're going to be using this lemon lime seltzer. Uh, we, we ran out of plain seltzer. We normally keep plain seltzer in the bar uh, for drinks, but uh, we just we had an oversight, so we used this. Uh, this stuff's going on its own too. All right, Abby. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we are using our Archie McPhee tiki cat, cat mugs. mugs. Woo! Fun stuff. All right, and it says just to do two ounces of seltzer, so not a lot. 
like that much in the bottom there, just enough to make it fizz up a little bit. Ooh, it's probably too much. It's kind of a, kind of a nice sort of pink color from the grenadine. That's pretty good. One thing we learned about the mugs and um, why they're shaped that way is tiki drinks generally are not a pretty color when you drink them. No, they're always um, kind of a muddy, yellowy brown. Yeah, so the, the mug actually hides the color and makes them a little more colorful looking. Now, a Singapore sling, however, is kind of a nice pink color, so uh, you can serve this one in a clear glass. Okay, and there you are, my dear. Thank you. Mahalo. Mmm. Oh, that is That's good. good. Mm. Even though it's gin based, I will say it has the soul mm -hmm. of a tiki drink. It really does. It's, yeah. Um, mm. Just the. Mm. 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 So let's go back to the table. All right. So tiki drinks are complicated, mm -hmm. and they take a long time. Um, it's one of the things people think, oh, you make tiki drinks at your house, you must be like some kind of drunk, but it's really, it's like 15 no. minutes to make one drink, and then by the time you're done, you're like, I want to enjoy this, and then I don't want to have to make another one, so yeah. I'm just done, you know. It's very hard to get drunk on tiki drinks when they take, you know, 15 minutes to make. Mm. Oh, that's really good, though. It's uh, it's not overly sweet, actually. Uh, it's got the, uh, the bitters in there. That, and the gin and the brandy all kind of mellow it but out. But that fresh pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. Because like the, the stuff you get at the grocery store, the from concentrate or, you know, it's very like overpowering and yeah. sickeningly sweet and it just, it has that pineapple juice taste. It's yeah. almost like Jolly Rancher level of... It's not good. It's not good. But the fresh pineapple, it's so easy. And it takes just a couple of minutes in the blender, yeah. some water, and you're good. So like we said about the book, this is Smuggler's Cove, and this was written by Martin and Rebecca Kate, and they own and run the Smuggler's Cove Tiki Bar in uh, San Francisco. It's a relatively new bar, it's only been open for the last few years, this book came out about uh, two years ago, um, but it is everything that you need to know. It's got beautiful full color pictures in here of all the drinks, it's got recipes, it's got party planning tips. It has uh, history in it, and um, even recipes for the syrups. Yeah, that they use at the, mm -hmm. at the restaurant. Yeah, that's how we made the syrup uh, by uh, following the recipes in this book. I'm just gonna focus on this Singapore sling for a little while. Man, that's good. Well, this is this is what they call an exotic cocktail. Uh, well, I mean, because it has uh, the fresh fruit juice in it, and uh, well, it's from Singapore, right? Um, it is, it's generally included in most tiki bars. Um, now if you- And Chinese restaurants. And Chinese restaurants, yeah. Uh, now if you read the blog uh, Kritiki uh, by uh, Humu Humu, she does not count it as a tiki drink and yet she's still a fan of it. Um, so, you know, your opinion varies. Is it a tiki cocktail? Is it an exotic cocktail? Does it really matter? It's delicious. It's welcome in my bar anytime. Absolutely. I like the, the mix with the, the brandy. Mm -hmm. There's something that the brandy, and we'll go into it later with um, uh, the fog cutter. Mm -hmm. When we get to the fog cutter. And that has sherry. And sherry makes every tiki drink better. Yeah. It's something magical. She asks for sherry floaters on her Mai Tais. Which I do. It's sacrilegious, but. Even my corn and oil. It's like sherry floater, sherry floater sherry on everything. Sherry floater on a yes. corn and oil? Yes. <sighs> it's a good thing you're cute. It is a good thing I'm <laughs> But Sherry is amazing! Uh, Alright, Julia Child, calm down. <laughs> What's the kitschiest place you have ever been to? Mm, the kitschiest place I've ever been to. Well, I could tell you tell you the kitschiest place I've ever been to, but I kinda wanna go there next week, so I don't want to give anything away. Abby, how about you? Oh, the original Opryland Hotel. No, I haven't been there since um was it the Gaylord Corporation took mm. it over in the mid 2000s and then got rid of the amusement park and turned it into a mall, you know, because yeah. that's just what we need is another mall. Uh, and but, I think Gaylord themselves is owned by like Hilton or Marriott or yeah. one of those companies anyway, so. Yeah, but the, the original, it, oh my gosh, it stayed, it, 
It stayed the 70s from the 70s until the late 90s, and it was <laughs> it was glorious. Every year at Thanksgiving, we'd have Thanksgiving dinner, we'd have a nap, and then we would go and see the Christmas decorations at the Opryland Hotel, and they were garish. And the hotel was just garishly 70s decorated. There was, there was a restaurant and bar in this shopping mall area at the front, and it had these like crazy gold lights and this optical illusion that was like a infinity circle and oh, uh, yeah. they had a rotating bar and the Christmas decorations were just like outlandish just <laughs> crazy so what about you guys where's your favorite kitchen place like let us know what was the cheesiest tackiest kitschiest place you've ever been that you had a wonderful time at but uh, until then no matter what happens, no matter how many versions of a particular tiki recipe you happen to stumble through and uh, combine them together, that's life. Just roll with it. Just roll with it. <laughs>